most important relationship in life is the one you have with yourself. And I developed a really good relationship and friendship with myself. I did not know what I wanted to do, but I knew the kind of woman I wanted to be. And by becoming that woman, I empower myself. I have never met a woman who is not strong. All women are strong, but they hide their strength. I think it's important that we encourage women not to be afraid of their own strength, because it's there. And the best way to help another woman is by telling your story. Every woman's story is inspiring to other women, and that's why we all have to speak. Dion, I love being with you, so thank you for coming back this year. Yeah. Icon, innovator, inspiration, uh, purpose. I think you have so much um, from the wealth of your experience uh, that you can share, and, and maybe we can start uh, by talking about the young people, because I, I hear this a lot. I'm on a campus a good bit, and um, you know, it's it's, what advice do you have for me? How do I start on this uh, road to uh, a purposeful life? And millennials today really want that kind of balance. Uh, it's uh, funny, I, I kind of relate very well with the millennials because when <laughs> I was 25, that's what I wanted, and I got it very, very quickly. So um, I relate to, to, to the millennials. but. I don't know. I, I was going to say something, but then I realized it was already in the video. But she can but, repeat it. Okay, but my first advice before anything is always to tell you that the most important relationship in life is the one you have with yourself. I mean, that is the number one rule for your own strength, for your own confidence. I mean, you may have wonderful relationships, but you could lose. You could lose, you could lose your mother, you could lose your husband, you could lose your health, you can lose your wealth, but you never lose your character. So I think the first, the first advice is that make sure that you create that little house within yourself that is your support system that you have that complicity with yourself. That means you have to be hard on yourself, that means you have to be demanding on yourself, but then after you're hard and, and demanding and disciplined and all of that, you can also have fun. So remember, be serious at the base, and if you're serious at the base, you could be frivolous on the top. <laughs> and, okay, so the first step is that. Have, make sure that you and yourself are your best friend forever. And that requires a lot of practice. That requires to continue to have a relationship. Not delude yourself. Be, you know, continue the dialogue with yourself. And then once you have that, then you look at the world. You look at the world and you're young, just be curious. Look at all the doors that are in front of you. And the least glamorous door may be your door. So push the door. Be open. Be open to everyone and everything. Because you don't know what is going to be the one thing that will be your thing in order to be yourself and to become yourself. So be, be your best friend and then start design your life. And you heard it here. Good advice. So, so then there, there are those of us who, you know, have worked for a long time, are looking for that next chapter, shall we say, or act three, and wanting to do something perhaps that's more meaningful, uh, is less of that drive that we've experienced in It's terms a different kind of a drive. You know, I, I, I think that we have three stages in life. We have development, which 
when I was young, I thought it would be up to 30, and then I pushed to 35. And, and then you have the middle, the middle years, who are supposed to be enjoyment, but often are not. And then, and then you have the third part of your life, which is supposed to be fulfillment, because it's a time that your children have children, and all of a sudden you realize that you were actually a good parent, because they repeat, <laughs> they repeat the same thing that you, you thought they never heard. So you have or a some things you wish you hadn't said. Right. <laughs> no. But anyway, so you really, um, so that's really important, and experience. All of a sudden you have this incredible thing called experience. And I remember when I was young, I could never, uh, I, I asked my teacher, and they couldn't explain what experience is. And the truth is, experience, you cannot explain what it is until you have it. So it's, um, and so of course, philanthropy and giving back and being, having a purposeful life happens. And, but it, it should happen before. It's just that, you know, sometimes, Philanthropy could be intimidating, you know, it's like landscaping. Ooh, I'd, can I cut that tree? Can I plant that tree? You feel like you need a greenhouse and you need somebody to tell you that. And then you do it yourself and you realize, oh yes, trees do plant, you know, do grow. So I think it's about, it's about paying attention. Paying attention is, is, is what it's all about. First you build your stand and then you pay attention to others. And just by paying attention, just by doing a little thing, introducing this person to another person, you can make magic happen. We all have a magic wand, all have a magic wand, and it's important that we use it. And the way we use it is by paying attention to everyone and everything. No one is truly boring if you actually get to the truth of them. <laughs> And, 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 and to the intimacy. So, you know, when I have a secret because, you know, sometimes you go to dinner party, I don't go so much anymore, but, and they sit you next to a really, 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 really boring man, and you say, what am I gonna do? And then the trick is make him talk about his mother. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you see the little boy that he was, and it's so much more interesting. <laughs> She has a PhD in psychology too, but I failed to uh. say that. Oh, that's terrific. So, Dion, you, you, you're a businesswoman, uh, you're an innovator, you're a philanthropist. So, for these kinds of successes and these various facets that you've been engaged in, you need to be able to generate ideas. You need to be stimulated. Where does this wellspring come from? You know, one of the things we've been talking about um, is the need for innovation um, being a part of our lives. Where do you, where do you get well, that? How do you tap of, it? First of all, let me tell you, there's no such thing as being successful and just sit down and sit on your success. Because it does, it's not like that. When people may think you're a success, you may yourself feel like a total loser because you're going through a very difficult time. So life is like an ongoing thing. You know, I write my diary. I've written my diary all my life. And whenever I open an old diary, I, I, it's actually quite boring because I say, I'm always at the turning point of my life. It seems like all I did was turn, turn, turn. <laughs> 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 So where do the ideas come from? Well, it's life, it's your life, and it's really, it goes very fast. So it's about opening your eyes and looking at the colors and looking at the people and, and having the experience and being engaged with what happens around you. And, and then you'll never be bored and then you'll always be engaged and you'll make lots of mistakes, but Mistakes make you, you know, from a mistake you turn it around and do something good. What was the question again? <laughs> I guess we now know where you get all of your inspiration and for but innovation life, and ideas. The two things that I'm inspired by is nature. Nothing is more inspiring than nature, nothing. 
the colors, the textures, the beauty, the mix of things. The, it, it, it's just overwhelming. So for me, that's luxury. To find nature, to find space, for me that is absolutely luxury. And then I get inspired by women. I get inspired by women because women are so strong. So let's just forget about, take it for granted that you are stronger. Just take it for granted. Don't, don't doubt your strength. Oh, this is a beautiful thing that I use when I get depressed. If you, if you doubt your power, you give power to your doubts. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. And <laughs> very good one. And so the most important thing is to really, really believe in yourself. So we go back to, to the first question, really. It's all about believing in yourself. I will briefly tell you my mother's story, because my mother's story is really what explains who I am. During the war, imagine during the war, 1944, occupied, uh, occupied Belgium. A girl gets arrested, 22 years old, goes to the concentration camp for 13 months, um, gets liberated because the, the, the war is over. She weighs 49 pounds. She can barely move. She can barely move. But when she fills the, the little questionnaire name, state of health, she wrote excellent health. She couldn't move. Anyway, so, so little by little, she went back to her, her home. Her mother fed her. Six months later, uh, the, um, her fiancé came, came to Belgium. They got married. The doctor says, you absolutely cannot have a child for at least five years because you won't survive and the child will not be born normal. And sure enough, nine months later, I was born and I was not normal. <laughs> so... My mother is the, my example of strength. She taught me fear is not an option. No matter what, never be a victim. And, and, and she, every year she used to write, and she used to tell me, God saved me so that I can give you life. By giving you life, you gave me my life back. You are my torch of freedom. So what she put in my hand as a baby is the torch of freedom. And I didn't realize any of that until I was much, much later. And I realized that's what I fight for, freedom. Freedom is everything. Freedom is health. Freedom is financial. Freedom is being able to speak. But more important, freedom is being able to be who you are. So my word to you is trust who you are. You are so much better than you think you are. Don't be afraid of your own strength. And once you know you're strong, you don't have to show it. Doesn't matter. You know it. <laughs> I've become a... I've become a life coach. Uh, I think, I think uh, you need your own... That's a good thing about getting old. So let's go quickly you about getting old. We Why are we going to get? A, I mean, we don't. We only have. We, want, we want to talk about getting old. Yes, yes, because it's an achievement. I am. I am. Be, being older, being older is an achievement. I turned seventy this year, and I tell, and I, I tell everybody because first of all, I like the sound of it. I, I like them to say, "Oh, really?" <laughs> Although they don't mean it. But also because it means that I made it, and truly, li having lived the life I lived, I should be 140. So <laughs> don't be afraid of the years. When I see a young a girl who is 35, but she's afraid to say her age, I mean, that is insanity. When a child is oh, you're 10 years old, ooh, you're 12, ooh, you're 15, and then all of a sudden, what? We don't say the age anymore? <laughs> I mean, that's insane. Well, you know, they say it's a state of mind, and there's no it's doubt not. in my mind. It's not. It's but not. but you, you will forever be young, <laughs> no matter how you feel physically. If you, and I, I doubt that you feel bad physically. So, Anyway, I don't know. Enjoy, 
I, I think you need your own show, too. I know. I enjoy think that's enjoy you your life and enjoy who you are. That's my message. And what a great message. <laughs> you done? I have, to, I have one more announcement. So our next discussion, as though anything can top this, <laughs> is about seeing the world from a different perspective. How are we going to push back on those stereotypes that hold women back? So uh, to get this conversation going, please watch the screen. And let's thank, once again, the amazing DBS. Thank you.